Hey, how you going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be taking you through my minimalistic Visual Studio Code setup. Okay, now just keep in mind that uh, when I say minimalistic, I really mean it. Okay, so I really don't have too much going on most of the time. I like to keep things simple, but I'm going to hopefully be answering some of the questions which I get almost daily on my YouTube channel relating to my setup such as, you know, theme choices, font choices and so on. One. So, um, you know, I'm going to be taking you through all of that stuff as well as at the end, a couple of extensions. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, but before getting into it, today's video is sponsored by Fusion Charts. Fusion Charts is a feature packed library full of responsive and interactive charts, graphs and gauges, making it a perfect fit for your next dashboard or data visualization project. Let me show you how easy it is to create a bar chart using Fusion Charts. To install, you can use NPM or you can paste in the HTML using Fusion Charts CDN. To render a chart using Fusion Charts, we can create a new chart container in the HTML. We can now head inside the JavaScript below and create a new instance of Fusion Charts passing through all of the properties and options, including the charts type. We can then pass through the data itself and then lastly call the render method and we're good to go. And as we can see, it was that easy to create a bar chart using Fusion charts. You can also change your theme. I can paste in the fusion theme right there and then provide the theme as being fusion. Then if I go back in the browser, we're going to get this beautiful theme right here. It also integrates nicely with your favorite JavaScript framework such as React, Angular or Vue. So go to fusioncharts.com or click on the link in the description below to begin your free trial today. Okay, so starting us off here, I'm going to be taking you through my favorite themes. Okay, so right here, I do like to use this theme called Adromeda in my personal projects or when I'm not doing decode. So right here, as we can see, it's a fairly nice looking theme. It's got bright colors and it also supports italics. So of course, I'm going to be liking that. Next up, we've got a theme called Min Theme. So this theme here uh, comes in two different varieties. We have a dark and light. And I actually use this theme here in some of my early videos, uh, I think between 2019 and 2020, I actually used this theme here. And I think a lot of you guys do enjoy this theme because I got quite a few comments about it. I still use this, uh, you know, semi-regularly uh, when I want to mix it up a little bit. And it's such a nice theme with uh, really simple colors and a dark background. So that's also a really nice theme there. And lastly, we have, of course, the decode theme. So um, I'm actually not just putting this in here because it's my theme. You guys actually do ask me quite a bit about this theme here. So um, I actually don't mind using it myself, to be honest, uh, outside of decode. So um, yeah, look guys, what can I say? Pretty, pretty simple theme here, uh, decode colors. And yeah, it's not too bad. So there you go. Okay, so next category here is my choice of fonts. All right, now I do like to rotate between three or four different fonts. Now I'm gonna be showing you three in today's video. Now the first font here is called Roboto Mono. So I use this font for my YouTube videos currently and I like it because it's quite simple. It looks nice and it's just easy to read. So um, here it is right here. It comes with italics also and a bunch of different font weights. So if you guys wanna download these fonts, I'll leave a link to them below but you just go to fonts.google.com to access Google Fonts and then you can just hit the download family button here um, once you're on your fonts to of course download that font family and then you can use them inside VS Code. So there's the first font there, Roboto Mono. The next font I like to use is Inconsolata for the same reasons as Roboto Mono. It looks simple, it's easy to read and it looks Nice. I like looking at the fonts. I think, you know, uh, when you're coding uh, half of coding or not half of coding, but quite a bit of the experience of, you know, software development is the beauty of your code. So if you have a nice font, it does definitely help with that aesthetic. So that is the next font here in Consolata. The last font here is Cascadia Code. So this font here has sort of come up in the past year or two, I would say in popularity, and it's just a really nice looking font. So I use 
use this font for my personal projects and it really is that simple guys I just like the way it looks and it comes with italics also and cursive so that's a really nice bonus and you can download this one by going to github.com go to Cascadia code repository go to the releases section on this side here and simply download it inside a zip file or tar.gz whatever you want to do but that is the last font right there Okay, so next up, I'm gonna be showing you my favorite icon theme. It is called Material Icon Theme. All right, now, I like this one because it's it just looks nice, okay? That's just my personal opinion, obviously. Um, but also, one of the really cool things about it is you're able to change the color of your folders, all right? So, if I go back inside my directory structure here, as we can see, a couple of nice icons here for my different directories like CSS, JS, but if I was to make a new directory here, uh, let's call it something like, let's just call it decode, okay? So this right here is the default folder icon, little gray, um, you know, folder. Now I can actually go F1 here and I can say uh, material icons and I can change the folder color. So if I press enter here, we can choose all these different colors for the icon. So for example, I can say something like red and it's gonna change that decode to now be a red icon. You can also specify a custom color. So I can go inside here and I can do custom color and make it my hex code 009578. That is the decode green. So I press enter and we get that nice decode green right there as my folder icon color. So really nice touch to this icon library. And of course, like I said earlier, it just looks really nice. Now, one extra small thing which I like to do is change my window zoom level, all right? So if you go into your settings by using control and then comma, you can do a search here for window zoom level. All right, so uh, with this setting right here, I like to make it negative 0.25 when I'm not recording YouTube videos, okay? So if I make it negative 0.25 now, it's gonna get really tiny, but what I find is at this zoom level, um, I actually prefer the look of the font um, in the sidebar and the title bar and the tab menu and so on. So at a slightly smaller zoom level, you're gonna get a slightly smaller font size. And like I said, I just like the look of it a little bit more. You're also gonna save a little bit of space. So let me know what you guys think about changing this zoom level here and if you guys like it, but that's a small thing I do like to do. The next part of my VS Code setup is gonna be user snippets, all right? Now, I've got a whole video dedicated to this feature here, but trust me, guys, if you haven't used user snippets, you definitely wanna uh, pay attention to this part of the video because this stuff here I use on a daily basis and increases my productivity by a ridiculous amount, okay? So basically, they're just shortcuts for writing out blocks of code. For example, I've got two user snippets here for my JavaScript. So now we have query selector and add event listener, and I've got my prefixes defined. So this just means that if I go inside my JavaScript file, I can type out something like AEL for my add event listener snippet. If I press enter, we get the entire code right there so fast, right? So now I can say something like my button as my event uh, target. I can use the tab to go straight into uh, the drop down menu here for my event type. I can just say something like change, just like that. Press tab again, and we go inside the function body. So this right here is super useful. Like I said, I've got a whole video dedicated to that if you want to check it out and find out a little bit more about user snippets. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to my favorite extensions, all right? So the first one here is Git Lens, okay? So I use this primarily for work, um, but also for collaborative projects, open source, things like that. Um, and look, basically this is going to integrate uh, more with Git inside the text editor. So one of the most useful features of this here is if I go back to uh, this repository here, so this right here is actually my, uh, my code, which I pulled down from my single page application project video. So as we can see here, if I go to a line, uh, for example, line four, we've got here the commit which added this line or recently modified this line. And you can do things like view the commit uh, 
on GitHub or whatever you know system you're using. Uh, you can also you know see the dates. You can go into the sidebar here and you can view the file history. There's quite a few things you can do with Git Lens and just really uh, you know adds to the whole Git integration as part of VS Code. So I do really enjoy using Git Lens. The next extension here is called Bookmarks. So it's a really simple extension, but it's going to save you lots of time. All right, now this this extension, as the name suggests, it's going to let you bookmark lines of code. All right, so if I go back to my server.js here and I just hit uh, Control Alt K. It's going to add a bookmark to that line right there. All right. So now if I go into, uh, you know, my sidebar here, actually, if I go down to my bookmark section, we can see all of the bookmarks which I currently have active. All right. Now you can easily, you know, hop between your bookmarks here. If I open up a new file, let's go to something like, uh, you know, my static CSS file here. Add a new bookmark for that line there. Go in the sidebar, we can see we get the other bookmark right here. So you can easily uh, swap between your bookmarks and it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier when doing things like debugging code or just hopping through files. Um, it's gonna hopefully help you guys out. So that is the second extension right there, which I do quite enjoy using. The next extension here is called To Do Highlights, all right? So this extension right here is also really simple but effective. Now, um, you guys, I'm sure, have probably seen in code bases before something called a to do. So if I go back to my JS file here, I've got this to do, which says add auth middleware at the top of my file here. Now, as we can see, the to do section is highlighted with a yellow background. So that right there is the extension. It allows you to easily see all of the to dos inside your file. It also works for things like fix me here and other annotations. So like I said, guys, this right here is really simple, but it's going to really help you out and identify those to do's. And the last extension is called Excel Viewer. So this here I use mainly for CSVs and it's just going to allow you to uh, view your CSV files and I assume other files here, uh, Excel spreadsheets, um, in you know a really nice grid layout. All right, so if I go inside my sample CSV file right here, um, this of course is, you know, we can read it, but of course it's going to look a lot better if it was formatted with a nice grid system, right? So if I go F1, I can say CSV and open preview here, press enter and we get it just like this. And you can do things like you can apply filters and you can sort and so on. Going to make your life a whole lot easier when reading CSV or Excel files. That is all for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I like to keep things really simple and minimalistic inside VS Code, but if you learned something in today's video or you're gonna use an extension, let me know below which one was your favorite, and I'll see you guys in the next video.